Good afternoon, kia ora koutou katoa, uh, ko Quentin Tokawingua, he hononga Otoraki Northern Regional Alliance, ace RMO, e mani, e mahi a hau. Uh, no mai, haere mai, welcome along to everyone who's viewing our stream on live on Zoom and also on Facebook. Um, today we're really happy and proud to present um, our webinar for Wairau Hospital. Um, so I hand over to our team um, in Wairau just to introduce ourselves um, and uh, move along with the presentation. So I hand over to you, Loretta. Thanks, Quentin. Um, good afternoon and welcome everyone. My name is Loretta Matheson and I'm the RMO team lead um, at Wairau Hospital. Um, I've been in this profession for 18 years um, and have been managing Wairau Hospital for four years. Mm -hmm. uh, I come over to uh, Blenheim from Nelson one to two days a week. Um, my name's Rebecca. Uh, I like Loretta, I've only been here since January. So I'm a PGY1 house officer. Um, so this time last year, I was where you guys were trying to apply for jobs and putting my CVs and getting references and all the rest of that. All right, so we've got a couple of pictures of the hospital. It's not a big hospital, small, close knit. So my rail is a, a 65 bed hospital. It's a base hospital for a region servicing a population of approximately 50,000 people. Um, why are hospitals easily accessible in Blenheim to Kaikoura, Plicton, Wellington, Nelson and Christchurch. Uh, Plicton you can get the ferry over to Wellington and um, by road to Kaikoura, Nelson and Christchurch. Yeah, so if, although it's a small hospital, it services quite a big area. So yeah, all the way down to Kaikoura, all the way over to Rye Valley, which is about an hour out from Nelson is where the cutoff is. So we get quite a lot of people who are living out in far-flung rural, uh, rural places and that definitely factors into patient management and that sort of thing. So the recruitment process at, at YRL is um, a mandatory cover letter. It would be nice to have a photo on. Um, they do carry out interviews throughout the year. So if you just contact the RMO unit and we can organise any interviews so when the panel get together, that's consideration of A scoring, CVs, references, where they've got an interest connection to the area, and uh, whether we think that you can work as part of a small team and help each other out. So there's five PG1, PGY1 positions available, and we can take further PGY1s throughout the year. Um, so late starts are negotiable um, for second or third quarters and runs available. Uh, we've got three in general medicine. ATNR is a run with ophthalmology and general medicine. Then general surgery ENT, general surgery urology, orthopedics, and there is an option to do relief in the third and fourth quarters um, because you would be covering general med medicine and general surgery. There is also an option to do community in the fourth quarter. I think community is um, GP, urgent care or hospice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so in your second year, um, all the PGY1 runs are available and there's also emergency, which has a week of anaesthetics every six weeks and ONG paediatrics and then just general relief, which covers everything. Um, if you're a PGY2, you cover ED, ONG peds, um, and all the other runs. Thing, things that are good about Wairo and, and small hospitals in general, I guess, um, depending on where you stand, having no registrars can be both a blessing and a curse, but I've found personally it's been more of a blessing. Um, you certainly get more of a steep learning curve when you're in a small hospital with no registrars because you do have to make more decisions on your own than you normally would but at the same time that means that the dynamic between the consultant and yourself is different so they tend to act more like registrars but they have the knowledge of the consultant of course so um and i've found that all the consultants i've had have been very very approachable so they have in mind me calling if i'm stuck or clicking them a message to ask about surgical plans or even even if you've got a we had a situation where there was a um, consultant stuck doing stuck in theater doing a major operation and I had 
uh, a patient deteriorate on the ward with a large bleed. I still was able to get help from everyone around me. So the more senior house officers came and helped. Uh, we had senior nursing staff on site able to help support as well and provide guidance. Um, and then, of course, the consultant was able to support from afar. So even when um, everything kind of falls apart, you still actually are really, really well supported here. So as the third point sort of says, like, you you learn to be independent, but you're not, you're not like, left in the lurch, so to speak. Um, and that sort of follows on, like, everyone, everyone's been really supportive here. So um, the range of house officers, the experience they have is quite, um, the range of it is quite large. So you have everyone all the way down from PGY1s like myself, all the way to, I think, the most experienced is PGY7 house officer. Um, get quite a few through from the UK, people who are, they tend to be, I think, usually PGY3 or 4, yeah. around about. And so, yeah, they've always been very helpful. And in a small hospital, you have to kind of like, you know, everyone, everyone knows you. So it's really easy to ask them for help when you do need help. And because there's no registrars, that means there's more opportunity for you to do the practical stuff, which is really, really cool if you're into that sort of thing. Um, you can learn paperwork, doing discharge summaries anywhere in the country, but it's not every hospital in the country where you're going to be able to go and scrub in and assist in a surgery. Um, I just had a chat with my general surgical um, supervising consultant the other day. And he said that if you're interested, you can eventually learn how to do your own lap collie at the end of PGY1 if you are really keen and you get yourself into theatre. So if you are keen surgically, at least, it would be a great opportunity for you. Um, in terms of lifestyle, outdoorsy is probably a be more for outdoorsy sort of people. Um, I think small towns themselves don't tend to have much of a nightlife or anything like that. But if you enjoy like water sports, kayaking, fishing, um, tramping, that sort of thing, this is a really, really good place. We've got the Richmond Ranges with tracks galore up the mountains. The Marlborough Sounds are absolutely gorgeous. You can get kayaking out there. It's amazing. Diving, fishing, that sort of thing. Um, be right up your alley. Uh, so my name's Gina Hart and I'm a house officer or first year uh, junior doctor uh, here at Wido Hospital in Blenheim. Currently I'm on orthopaedics so it involves rounding with the doctors each morning and coming up with a list of jobs to do for those patients and then often in the afternoons I head off to theatre to go assist in surgeries. Well, I specifically wanted to come to a hospital like Wairo Hospital um, because there's no registrars here. So it means that as a house officer you have a really close working relationship with the consultants. Um, and it also means that you, you get a lot of experience at making decisions and um, managing patients that maybe you wouldn't get at a bigger hospital. So it's been a very steep learning curve, but um, I wouldn't have it any other way. Probably about two years ago, I came to Nelson Marlborough uh, and stayed here for a few summers uh, while I was studying. Absolutely loved the place, loved the people, um, loved the sites. Um, so I thought, why not work here as a PGY1? And so one of the good things about the Nelson Marlborough District Health Board is that uh, it's actually staffed really well. So when you want to get leave, as long as you're putting sort of adequate time in advance, you usually get it, and it's a pretty rare occasion where you don't get your leave. I'd say if you're ready to um, be sort of thrown into it um, and have to learn things really quickly but still within a very supportive environment, um, if you're um, willing to have a really close working relationship with consultants and not have a registrar um, and at the end of that feel like you've, you've just, you've learnt maybe what you might have learnt in a year at a um, bigger centre but learn that within months um, at a place like this, then I'd highly recommend coming. Um, and also if you want to come to a place where when you leave the hospital um, there's just so much to do in the outdoors and if you like good wine and good food um, and also just be in a very relaxed and, and chilled out town where 
um, any stress that you might get from working in some, the medical world is often waylaid just by the environment that you're in. It's absolutely beautiful up here. Um, just that point about um, leave is absolutely true, by the way. Um, I've found that so far, if I apply for leave, as long as there aren't too many other people taking the time off at the same time, so, you know, rostering wise, it's safe, I will get the leave. Um, so I've gotten leave for pretty much everything, every time I've applied for it. And even when it's been like, I've had to do short notice leave, um, Loretta and Joe have made efforts to try and like rearrange RDOs, for example, so that I can um, spend time because my family were coming down, for example, like they're very, very accommodating. That's been really nice. Whereas people, some of my friends in larger hospitals have had their, their leave declined months before they've, you know, even been on that run for no other reason than, you know, rostering. No one else has applied for that leave yet, you know? So. I think um, in terms of DHBs, this one's a pretty good one for me. Um, so for orientation week, um, once we know the five nurse officers, um, you have four days orientation. Generally, the first day is with the Nelson PGY1 intake, which is 12 nurse officers, and we have a district-wide orientation. And then the other three days um, include shadowing on the boards and um, advanced cardiac life support for one day. And then the third day is going around pharmacy, radiology, laboratory, um, just one-on-one -on -one, um, question time. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a pretty um, extensive orientation for the four days. Mm -hmm. So now in Melbourne District Health Board, um, of our values, uh, respect, we care about and will be responsive to the needs of our diverse people, communities and staff. Innovation, we will provide an environment where people can challenge current processes and generate new ways of working and learning. In teamwork, we create an environment where teams flourish and connect across the organisation for the best possible outcome. Integrity, we support an environment which expects openness and honesty in all our dealings and maintains the highest integrity at all times. And we've got a couple of photos of the Marlborough Sounds and Picton. Um, so, this is just a photo of some of the house officers and one of the TIs. Um, who's in Blenheim currently, um, just uh, some of the things we do in our downtime, go out for work drinks, go temp and bowling. So these are all the people who've scored over 100. So we took a um, cute photo of everyone. Um, I suppose and just, just some other points about Wairo, which I think are a bit of a benefit. Um, so uh, last but not least is the free coffee. Um, you're allowed to get one cafe made coffee every day, which is something I think a lot of hospitals don't do. Um, so it's the little things that matter when you're tired and you need some caffeine. It's actually a real, a real nice thing to be able to get a free one. Um, we also have um, protected teaching time on Wednesdays and Thursdays, and it's usually uh, in collaboration with Nelson Hospital often Zoom webinars, but occasionally we would also do things with like the ED SMOs, um, who will go over like emergency management of um, patients, maintaining trackies and that sort of thing. Um, one thing which other people may not think of, but will be relevant for you guys down the track is that ED is a very uh, a competitive run in a lot of hospitals as an RMO, because it's a requirement for a lot of specialties, like anesthetics, ED of course, ICU, um, surgery, as a lot of the surgical specialties will require ED. So as a result, like it can be real hard when you're a house officer in a big hospital to actually get um, ED as a run. But here, it's you know the, you can't almost can't avoid it to be honest because there's uh, few enough house officers that you are going to get ED as a run in your second year. So that's just sort of something to take into consideration. That you might not have thought about, but other than that. I think 
pretty much everything I had to say. Yep. Yeah. They have a great REMO lounge, um, which has a TV and two computers, um, a nice leather lounge suite, and we we're working towards having a more healthy eating cafe, um, same as we have in Nelson. Hey, just one question I had is, what sort of what's the population and demographics for for YRL? Um. So I think off the top of my head, the Blenheim itself is 28,000. Right. Um, so the 50,000 for them. Yeah, but the region, the population it services is about 50. And there's 65 beds. Um, so you do encounter, um, run into quite a few issues often with patients who are out in padlock, for example, in the middle of the Richmond ranges in terms of like access to services once they're discharged and that sort of thing. Oh. Um, kia ora. what is the rostering like in terms of long days, weekends and nights? I'm not on nights yet, so I cannot say how uh, good or bad the rostering is. Um, but long days, certainly I probably do one maybe once a week, um, maybe like once every second week if I'm lucky. Um, I don't do long days, uh, and long days until 10 p.m. when you hand over to the night house surgeon. Um, I don't do long days on a on the two weeks where I'm doing a weekend, um, and that's part of the mecca. Um, so out, yeah, out of the 13 weeks, you get three weekends, and probably roughly around about six long days in the 13 mm, weeks. Yeah, yeah. and um, yeah nights after six months yeah yeah and how often would you do you reckon nights, do nights once we get you all the people you have one month? set of weekend nights and one set of week nights and then the other two weekends would be just normal weekends yeah okay. yeah per quarter um and in terms of i was going to say weekends you work from eight till eight um 12 hour shift and you usually, if you're on a medical run, you'll do all the medical patients. If you're on a surgical run, you'll cover all of the surgical patients. In reality, with at least with surgery, that means that you're you don't usually go and see the ONG patients or the pediatric patients because they'll be seen by the consultants on their own only if they have a job for you to do, and they'll come over and tell you basically. Um, so you're usually managing just gen surge and all of those. Are the lunches good? Yes, some are. Some some need to be improved. I think I'm avoiding fish Fridays and that's so. <laughs> um, um, and I, I'm 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 a uh, I'm a meat eater, so vegetarian lunches are not my favorite. Types of training opportunities and um, other things like pastoral support and care are. Available at YRL. Um, so in terms of teaching, yeah, that was Wednesdays, usually around lunchtime, and Thursday around lunchtime. Don't worry, you're allowed to take your lunch in with you. It's all pretty laid back. It's usually done over Zoom with Nelson. Um, then you've got uh, in terms of pastoral support, um, I'd say. Well, I've always found like at least with getting leave and that sort of stuff for Edna and Joe are always very open to um, accommodating for that. Um, as long as you provide enough notice, I think, and there's not too many people taking time off. Um, your more senior house officers have always been really, really supportive. Educational supervisors. So my educational supervisor um, is one of the ED SMOs and she's fantastic. She has given me her permission, not that I'm going to do it, to call her at 3 a.m. if I'm stressed or feeling like I'm not supported, or if I've got like a situation where um, there's a patient who's sick and a, and a, for example, a surgical consultant has said, you know, something I'm not happy with. Um, so I think in your senior house officers, we've got one general medical um, registrar here. Um, who's doing like real hospital medicine. Um, she's pretty experienced and is always open to um, you going up to her and asking her questions as well. Yeah, so I had a situation where a couple, for a couple of weeks, 
one of my consultants was away and so I just went to her for help with management of patients and it was absolutely fine. Um, so next question, since they are so connected, do people move between Nelson and Waiura at all? Yes, they do, but they don't tend to in their first year. Um, sometimes in the, probably more at the end of their second year, um, they'd, they'd come to Nelson uh, looking to work towards maybe a general, a general registrar position. Um, so they may come over just to do a few other runs and then um, pick up a general medicine registrar position or something like that. Um, the problem is a lot of our registrar positions in Nelson are advanced as well. So there's not a lot of, we've just got some non-training surgical um, registrar positions that are just coming up. But apart from that, there's not a lot of uh, availability in other specialties. Yeah, it very varies a lot, doesn't it? Um, mm. I think one of the things about Waro is that because there's no um, registrar positions apart from the rural hospital reg that's currently training now, um, it's a very specific circumstance. Like you can't, if you want to continue with your training, get accepted into a training program, you will eventually have to leave because it's a small hospital and can't really accommodate registrar positions. Um, so in most of the time, I think the, you'll want to go to like a tertiary or at least a mid-sized mm -hmm. hospital to continue your training. Um, but as a starting point, it's really, really good. You'll arrive in a bigger hospital being <laughs> like leagues ahead of your colleagues. You'll have, done, you'll have done minor ops. You'll have been in ED overnight by yourself and able to handle, you know, everything, but, you know, the most specialised of stuff. So... Yeah, I think the pros outweigh the cons for the most part. For those who um, haven't done attachments in Nelson Marlborough um, during fifth or their TI year, um, what's the best way that they could present their application to you to ensure that they at least get considered for being shortlisted at YRL? So a lot of it would be what they put in their cover letter. Um, if they could put a good reasoning for coming here. We do generally have um, seven or eight PGY1s here though at the one time. Yeah. Um, the last two or three years we've taken extra PGY1s in um, February and May uh, throughout the year if, if people are interested in starting later. Um, is there anything final that um, Loretta and Rebecca that you wanted to add? I think certainly a cover letter is probably the main thing, I think, for applications in terms of what Loretta and um, the, uh, the other people on the employment committee look at. Yeah. Um, I yeah. would try and get an interview, I think, even if it's over Zoom with, um, is it Rion? Rion, yeah. Rion Van Rensburg. He's the general medical consultant who does, the, who does actually look at all the applications. Um, so him actually being able to talk to you and, you know, write down something in a notebook helps him remember your application when it comes through. So how, do, how does that work, Loretta? Um, is, are you saying that there may be some who are interviewed and some who are not? Um, yes, that's are right. Yeah. 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 So how, how, how does that process work? So they sent through their, um, their ACE applications, that's complete. Um, it's reviewed by your pre vocational committee and um, then interviews sent out by invitation by email and are they done in person or are they done by Zoom? Um, right. Yeah, we yeah. don't actually do um, interviews after the applications have come in. We're doing interviews all year round. Um, so people can request an interview. Some people fly in, but then other people are just here already as a training intern. Yeah. And just have an interview while they're here or come over from now and have an interview. Um, yeah. Yeah. I found last year, I, it was for the places I was really keen on applying for, it was essential that I actually meet up with um, the person who was doing the employing. So in this case, Rion and actually talk to him, or at very least, you know, do a Zoom interview so that he can write something down. Um, 
I think that's probably key. And it's just general advice for any of the TIs, regardless of whether you're applying here or not. I think contacting the hospital you are interested in and um, interviewing with them is essential. Yeah. yeah. So if you contact um, myself through email, then I organise um, interview with Rion and then get back to you with a day and time. That, that suits both sides. So, so that can be done during the application process or even right after, after the application process. I uh, have to send the, the selection names through. Yep. Okay. And it goes without saying to increase your chances of being matched with wire hours to obviously preference wire hours the number one. I think if you're really serious about yeah. coming here, yeah. Anything else to add? Anything final? <laughs> No, I think, yeah, I said everything we need to say, yeah. That's great. And, and you know what, we, we made it through with no technical issues or anything else no. like that. Um, and I'm, I'm really happy um, for you to come along, Loretta and Rebecca, for volunteering your time as well. So we really appreciate your time this afternoon. Um, and the students will benefit from this watching live and also later um, on stream as well. Um, so I wish you guys a, a really good evening and Lorena, I'll see you next week for Nelson's um, presentation um, and Rebecca, all the best for the rest of your um, PGY one year and the remainder of your house offices before you step up into a reg role. Um, thank you very much for coming along. Thanks, Tēnā pai tamahi. Hi, Tēnā. See ya.